taking advice and not being afraid to ask for it. One of the things a lot of people do, and I've I come across this um, in corporates and stuff as well, because often they are trying to do things they have no idea what they're doing. And I do get in trouble for saying these things sometimes because quite simply some people don't like hearing the truth. But the reality is a lot of people have got into roles where they can manage other people as long as those people don't ask them for guidance. <laughs> because the whole point is a top tier in many companies is formed with no understanding. A lot of people have not been rising up through the ranks. Instead, there's been a top tier forming from university graduates, etc., and with Krillin, nepotism. Um, but the point is, they haven't got the experience and knowledge to actually run things. They, they're relying on the people below them, but sometimes that gets disrupted uh, with things like leadership programs, where you'll take some young 22 year old and put them in the position of somebody that should be in their 40s. Um, with knowledge, experience and everything else, but you took them on because they were a graduate and you thought they were they should go on the leadership program, yet the guy that they put below them now, that was actually teaching them everything, suddenly goes, well you're in charge now, away you go. And they try and put pressure on these people to actually train these young 20-somethings, and often the 20-somethings wouldn't be able to grasp it anyway because it took 20 odd years to get the knowledge in the first place. But anyway, the point being is don't be afraid to ask. And don't be afraid for somebody, if somebody criticizes you and says, well, I don't think that's right. I think this is the, the way this should be done. And explains why. This is why when people are, this is the difference between trolling and doing this. Because when, when you actually turn around and say, well, you know, people say the microphone's too quiet. Well, that's a statement. The microphone is too quiet. And I agree with you, I change it. But when somebody goes, oh, you're fat, or something like that, it's like, so what? You know, it doesn't bother me, because that is supposed to be some sort of argument basis with no uh, outcome that means anything beyond the fact, for me, that A, they're opinionated, and B, they don't have a mind their own business. Um, but the whole point being is, when somebody is asking you, like, for example, maybe maybe you can't do something at work and they can see you doing it the wrong way over and over again and says, you know what, I've got a training course that'll teach you how to do that if you're interested. There's nothing wrong with that. Take it, take that information. In the same way, if you've got something and you're sitting with somebody that knows um, more than you do, tap into that resource, use it. I'll give you an example. When I was at Birmingham University, I work in asset management, things like SFG20, which works out the maintenance uh, regimes for facilities, you know, the, everything from the air conditioning, the water systems, heating systems, everything. The guy I'm working with um, works in BIM. Well, BIM is tied in with the, what would be AutoCAD. The, it's, it's like AutoCAD on steroids. Um, but the, the point being is you tie the two together, but they're completely different um, entities and we've both got a lot of knowledge on the stuff that we know. So we started crossing everything over and starting to see where we overlapped and start filling in the gaps for each other. Because at the end of the day, we weren't actually going, well, I've got this, I'm not going to share it, which is what happens in many places. We actually turn around and say, well, I've got this and you've got that. Let's make this together and we'll, we'll get this working and we actually develop some new things out of it that nobody else has got. Why? Because it was to our benefit. At the same time, we're both more excited about it because we're actually learning something off each other. Instead of going through your normal routine of Excel spreadsheets and everything else and the day-to-day -day drudgery, you're actually going, oh, I didn't know that, that's new. Put that in there. Oh, and how do we cross-link that to that? And you start building some new products out of this stuff. And it's because you've got that ability to turn around and say, I don't know how to do this. I've never used this before. And he's doing the same on the other things. And you start crossing you the paths. He's helping you, you're helping him. The same as learning a language. If you can get hold of, like in Spain, if you get hold of somebody that Spanish wanted to learn English, you're perfect because you can help each other because the explanations into each other's languages will draw more of the local language out of both of you. Because trying to explain, um, like earlier, I picked my car up. 
and the guy's Ukrainian speaking English, but he, he was like, the car's upstairs. What he actually means is across the road and up the hill, but he said upstairs because that's what he understands it in English because it's up, up the hill, but upstairs. Um, but the point is, there's a prime example where you could actually explain the difference between up a hill and upstairs and it makes it more interesting. And that's what I say, but it also from a career point of view, it's worth doing for development. Recognizing your, what's missing from your skill set. And also, don't be afraid to contact people on things like LinkedIn that you may see as a mentor or want them to mentor you. There's been a few people ask me for, for advice and stuff relating to mentoring where I can, but in all honesty, th there hasn't been anybody on the asset side, which is where I'm predominantly doing a lot of stuff these days. Um, where it has been has been about the call center things, which I can head you off in the right direction. But in all honesty, unless we're looking at setting up a new entity, um, it'd be difficult for me to actually help you that far along the way. You know, I can, I can help you with the software, I can help you set it up, I can get you in the lines of how to train people, etc., and relating to the Philippines and people I've worked with, etc., in my network, etc. But there isn't much beyond that I can do because there's been a gap from 2012 because I've been doing other things. Um, but don't get me wrong, it doesn't take me long to understand it, but you've got to understand that from my point of view, for me to go over that, it's got to be worth my time. I don't mind helping you with the knowledge I already have, but I'm moving away from the call centers in the sense of help desk and all that sort of stuff and more in line with other stuff I'm doing. So that sort of stuff I don't really spend that much time on anymore because there's so much new stuff to do. Um, but up to you. And what I do recommend is if you're into a specific thing, like venture with these mechanics, a lot of people tap into his resources for understanding vehicles and working on vehicles, etc. There is nothing wrong with that. He's obviously got a lot of experience and time served knowledge with working on vehicles. And I do think there's a lot of that that is disappearing over the years. I know within Carillion, when I was there, there were several key people that literally died and they couldn't replace them. And they hadn't even thought of it because it was such a strange place to work. Um, it was not driven. It's not like the way I think of things. If I work in an office, I'm part of that office. So if I know John only knows the CAD system, AutoCAD and Revit and whatever, I would say, well, we've got an apprentice coming in that's got to learn bits and pieces. I'll put in more with you, John, because I think you're, you've got something they're interested in, but also if you're off sick or something, they can fill in at least some of it. You try and pass the knowledge on. A lot of places ain't doing it anymore. And that's what I say, it's well worth grabbing knowledge where you can and what you can because you make yourself impossible for people to, oh, we've got redundancies coming up, I wonder who's going. Well, we're not getting rid of him because he runs pretty much all the different software sets. He understands the, how the systems are put together, blah, blah, blah. Instead, they'll be looking around the office as somebody else. Thanks for watching.